Alright, welcome to part 3 of our scripting series. Today's video we're going to be talking about events. So in addition to properties and functions, every object also has events, which can be used to set up cause and effect systems. Events send out signals when specific things happen in game, such as a player touching an object or a player connecting to the game. So basically, Every object in the game has a set of events, and you will learn them as we go through the series, as well as when you're in the future if you're making a game and you use the Roblox Developer Hub, you will come across more events to use. Um, and I'm going to teach you how to use those events and fire them. So the first thing we're going to start with is, just as the last couple episodes, we're going to have a part and a script, and we're going to use a variable to define our part part will be script.parent and we're going to make an event that when you touch a part it'll trigger the event and that is a built-in event of Roblox so we're going to do part dot on touched no part dot touched my bad connect function and press enter and that was a lot I know it was a lot to type um take a look we have part representing our variable, representing our part. When that is touched, which is this is a touched event, we're going to connect that to this function. This is one method of using an event. There is another method I will show you in a minute. But when we do that, let's print a message to the output. And you're going to notice something right away. If we start which i have my button up here but you can just press the test button in the home tab when we touch it's going to fire as you can see there is a number next to it declaring how many times it has gone off so that means it's working but this event also fires when something touches it so if another part let's say delete that script, unanchor it. If we played this and this part jumped on this part, it would also fire the touched event. So you can see. But we don't want that. Depending on what you want to do, you might not want that. But for today's episode, we don't want that. So we have to do something specific to see if the person or the thing that touched our part was in fact a player. And to do that, we're going to use a built-in parameter for this event. So as you can see here on screen, I am on the Roblox Developer Hub. And this hub has all the information you need for looking for at the API references for your scripting, which it's basically just showing you events and parameters and how you can use functions and other information like that. You can also learn to script on this, but it's easier to learn from a video. Um, at least from my experience. So we're on this website and I searched up here touched because we're looking for the touched event. But we have a couple here. But the one we're looking for is part.touched. In part, its class name is also known as a base part. So we're going to click on this one and it'll take you here. And remember I said there was a parameter and the other part and the name of this parameter that they have set up is called other part. You can name it whatever you want, but that is just a, its default name, basically. And it's an instance, which just means an object. And the other part that came in contact with the given part. That is what this parameter stands for. So, you remember when we did event, um, functions in the last episode? When we wrote in a parameter, we had to set it when it ran. But we're not running it. The event is running this function. So the event provides the parameter for the function itself. This touched event gives it this parameter and sets it by itself from being touched. So what we're going to do is, in, actually, I prefer writing hit, so it represents what hit the object, and we're going to do an if statement. This is just to give an example on its parameters, but we'll go over if statements in a future video. But to do an if statement, we're going to type if hit dot parent find first child humanoid, then then hit enter and it'll add an end. Then you can copy your print and put it in here. 
and that is everything that you need to know we'll go over all the scripts you see here we'll go over that in the next episode but trust me if we go into game and step on it it will give us this message and i assume that if we add a part and drop it over top we will not get a message in the output. Remember in the beginning of the tutorial, I told you guys that there was a, another way to write a function. This is connect. This method connects this event to this function in one line. It's a lot easier to write, but there is another method where if you want to write your own function with, you know, like we did, we have our parameters. So in this case, let's do untouched. The name of our event is untouched and the parameter is going to be hit. Then we can put this in here again. But for the to fire this function, we're going to connect it to an event manually, I guess. Kind of it's kind of different. Um, but we're going to do part dot touched, then connect. And then we're going to put on touch like that. So it's essentially the same thing. Because if you think about it, we're throwing in a function that's already been made in here. Essentially, this is a function. That is the function right there. But the way it's written just looks a little wonky. But trust me, it works. It looks, if you think about it, it's very similar. Right? So that is everything that you need to know on events. Um, we'll be going over a couple different events in the future, but other than that, that is the basics and that's all you need to know. Thank you guys for watching this episode of the scripting series. If you're enjoying, make sure you hit that like button. I would really appreciate it if you consider subscribing since it's the best way to support my channel. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next episode.